What is going on everybody? CarGuyV8 here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up a very simple engine run stand. And I'm also going to answer a question that a viewer asked several months ago, which is how many wires does it take to run a small block Chevy? So if you have any questions that you want answered, ask them below. I might make a video about it at some point. I'm gonna start off with a disclaimer. This is not an engine run stand. This is a very sturdy engine rolling stand sold by Summit. It's made to even support big blocks with transmissions attached to them. So it's got a very high weight capacity and it is extremely sturdy and a good built little uh, metal rolling stand, but it's not a run stand. It does not have a place for a radiator. It doesn't have a place for gauges, for wiring, any of the necessary stuff to run an engine on, it does not have. So if you're smart, don't do this. Any website that you buy these from will tell you it's not an engine run stand. And they're right. A lot of that's for liability reasons because, I mean, you'll have a spinning flex plate, spinning harmonic balancer, a hot engine, all this stuff. So I'd highly recommend that you actually go to like an engine dyno shop or something and spend the extra money to do that. Don't, don't do this right here. But for educational purposes, I'm going to show you how. So this is, like I said, just a Summit rolling stand. The Jegs one is actually shorter, so you actually can't fit a starter on a Jegs one. The Summit one's just a little bit higher up like this, and the Summit one's also about $20 more. So for $90-ish, a little more, you know, with tax and all for the stand, you'll want... An old pressure gauge, absolutely. That one's like 20, 30 bucks, I believe. And a few wiring, a uh, few wires. So for the cost of around 150, you can fire up an engine on a makeshift engine stand. Now, as for the battery cables, just like a vehicle, you will have a positive battery cable and a negative battery cable. The negative just go into the cylinder head. The positive just go into the solenoid on the, on the uh, starter, just like you would in a vehicle. To actually run the engine, you need two wires. First, you'll have the battery wire, which goes to the HEI distributor over here. And I've got it routed around the carburetor going down to the positive battery cable. Now keep in mind, like I said, this isn't an actual engine run stand and it's not a car, so you gotta route things so that they won't burn and it's wise to put a fusible link or a fuse in this in case that gets on the header and causes a short. Last thing you want is for it to spark. The other wire coming down to the battery cable is going up to the push button starter right here, the super cheap push button starter works just fine it's going up and it comes right down here to the starter solenoid so just two wires that's all it takes to run one of these a small block ford a small block mopar big block whatever they're all very similar very easy to set up one thing i like to do is take a uh, torque converter cap if you've got a, one of those you can order them they're like seven or eight bucks if you don't have one but if you've got a torque converter cap sitting somewhere you can cap off the bottom of the water pump and that way you can put water in the block at least so so that there aren't air pockets inside of the cooling passages and the cylinder heads and block so it's always wise to put some water in there and for if for no other reason you can you know spin the water pump after you run it this should allow you to run it for roughly 45 seconds to a minute without causing any issues you know because you will have coolant in the head it's just not circulating so don't run it long these mufflers they're enforcer 2 mufflers from summit racing very cheap this is just so that it's quiet enough that you can hear what's actually going on with the engine. You can make sure there's no crazy noises or anything like that. The mufflers were like $22 each. The collector reducers right there, they are three inch to two and a quarter inch, and they are cheap on Summit as well. This is, this is all just a super simple, cheap setup. If you ever have another engine to run, you just pull the headers off, put them on something else. It's got the exhaust with it already. So, very simple setup. I have this bolted to the water pump right there. 
just because you don't want this just flopping around. You know, it's easy to get wires burned if it's just sitting there flopping around. You wanna make sure everything looks good, no exposed wiring anywhere, and we should be able to start at no trouble like this. So I'm gonna roll it into the spot. I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't do this at home. All right, let's start it up. Next, you will want to fill up the float bowls. You do that through the vent tubes on each side of the carburetor. You just do that with a little squirt bottle if you want. I know this one's capped. I'm just giving an example. These float bowls are already full, and you'll just give it a little, little squirt. 